So today we're here at the Expo Park in Reims for the Salon des Vignerons Independent. It happens every November here and it's a fairly major date on the Serenity Annual Calendar because this is where we come to buy the wines for our cruises for the following season. So today there are about 300 winemakers exhibiting here. All are small, independent, often family-run estates and they're from all over France. And with the opportunity to taste the wines, meet the winemaker and buy at cellar door prices, for us it's a fantastic opportunity to source all of our favourite wines from across the country. So it's now a few weeks later and I thought I'd make a little video to introduce you to the selection of wines that we've chosen for the 2022 season. Given where we cruise, you won't be surprised to hear that we have a big selection of champagnes on board. But we also offer with each meal a red wine and a white wine, specifically chosen to pair with the food that's on offer. So if you're already booked a cruise with us in 2022 or are just thinking about a trip, let's take a look at what you'll be enjoying on board. So let's start with what's probably one of the best known French white wines, a Sancerre from the Loire Valley. Now, if you're a Sauvignon Blanc lover, then this is definitely a wine for you. The flinty soil here gives the wine a sort of dry but fruity flavour with a, just a hint of grassiness to it. We tried lots of different Sancerres at the show this year, but we've chosen to go again with the Tenel Blondelet winery. And we aren't the only ones who are impressed with this wine because it actually won a bronze at the Decanter World Wine Awards this year. We also have another wine from the Loire Valley, again 100% Sauvignon Blanc, but this time from the Puy Fumé Appellation. The grapes were first planted here by the Romans back in the 5th century, and with this wine you've got a lot more minerality and a lot more citrus flavours which come from the limestone soil in the region. So now let's head a little bit further southeast to Burgundy, where of course Chardonnay is king. Now we've got three wines from Burgundy on the list this year, the first of which is this Puy Fusé. Now, I love this wine. I think this is a really classic Chardonnay. It's got all of that sort of butteriness, it's rich, it's full bodied, and it's got all of those oak imparted flavours that you'd expect from a Chardonnay. Our second on the list is a Merceau. So Merceau's in the Coda Bone, and we've met the father and daughter team who run this winery a few times at previous shows, but we're really delighted to include their wine for the first time this year. Now this one comes from a small hilltop plot where 40 year old vines and it's really well balanced with both white flower flavours and also a refreshing minerality to it as well. Now Chablis is probably the most famous of Burgundy's white wines and probably this is my personal favourite on the list this year. This one is a premier cru, it's from a vineyard plot called Le Homme Mort or The Dead Man. Now that might sound like a rather sinister name but actually it relates to an ancient graveyard which is located next to it where they found a 7th century sarcophagus a few years ago. And what I also love is that the floral flavours in this one are really nicely balanced against the sort of big powerful fruit flavours from the Chardonnay. So for the red wines we're starting our journey down in the very south of France in Bordeaux on the left bank of the Gironde River. The San Estefé vineyards are located in the northernmost tip of the Omedoc, and our selection from this region comes from Chateau de Combe. Now, when we were tasting, this wine really stood out to us. It was, just, it was the roundness and richness and fullness of all the flavours. And this might be because the winemaker from this chateau learnt his trade at the famous Baron Rothschild estate. This one's a 50% Merlot, 50% Cabernet Sauvignon blend. It's also organic and no sulfur dioxide was used in the winemaking process. Now our second wine from Bordeaux needs no introduction because it's from the famed Saint-Emilion Grand Cru Appellation. Now this one's 100% Merlot and it's got a beautiful deep purple colour with soft tannins and a round full bodied flavour. Now what's particularly interesting about this one is that we've got two different vintages on board from the same chateau. So you can try both the 2008 and the 2011 and see the subtle differences between the two vintages. Chateau Neuf de Pape is probably another name that you'll know. Hailing from the south of the Rhone Valley, we love the easy drinking fruitiness of this wine, which makes it perfect for lunchtime. As is typical with this appellation, Grenache is the dominant flavour here, but you've actually got 13 different grape varieties blended together in the bottle. This is the Prestige Cuvée from Chateau Cabriere, which is made from parcels where the vines are 85 years old. <laughs> Why does this matter? Well, as the vines mature, they actually produce smaller and fewer fruit but those grapes tend to have a much more concentrated, intense flavour. 
They also tend to ripen earlier and more evenly, which means that you don't get those green astringent tannin flavours that can occur in some red wines. Now, it may not be as well known as some of our other wines, but personally, I find that a Chinon from the Loire Valley is a perfect summer lunch wine. It's 100% Cabernet Franc, and it's got really soft tannins, as well as notes of blackberries and black currants on the nose, and some spicy notes as well to add complexity. It's perfect served slightly chilled and paired with charcuterie or pâté. And of course, no French wine list would be complete without a Burgundy Pinot Noir. We've been offering the Nuit St Georges from Domaine Gilles for a couple of seasons now, but for 2022, we've decided to go one of the, with one of their premier crew wines. This comes from a mid-slope plot, which is particularly well draining, meaning that you get wines with a more intense flavour. Here, the tannins are well balanced with natural acidity, giving a complex, full-bodied wine with a long finish with vanilla notes. The Gilles family have been making wines in the heart of the Codor since 1570, and although they aren't actually certified organic, no herbicides or pesticides were used on this plot. Our final red wine is from right here in Champagne. Now, the method for making sparkling wine wasn't perfected until the 17th century. So up until then, all of the wines produced in Champagne were still. Today, 99% of the Pinot Noir that's grown in the region is used in Champagne. But in the Grand Cru villages, like Bouzet, where this is wines from, some of the small producers still make a traditional still red wine. So I hope you enjoyed this quick overview of the wines we'll be offering on board next year. I'd love to hear which ones you're most excited to try, so let me know in the comments below. And we look forward to welcoming you on board soon. Sante!